I was discriminated against all my life because of my golden child sister. Finally, I got my sweet revenge on my wedding day. I faced discrimination my entire life because of my golden child sister, and she even tried to walk down the aisle at my wedding. Finally, I got my revenge. My parents always favored my sister and it was far from subtle. If she accused me of something, they'd believe her and punish me. But if I accused her, even with undeniable proof, they'd give her a lighter punishment and find a way to scold me too. My birthday cake always had to be her favorite flavor, and my parents pretend they didn't know I hated it. They always bought her more than me and took us where she wanted, even if it was supposed to be about me. My sister grew up spoiled and used me as a punching bag. At first, she mostly ignored me, but things got worse when we were teens. She ended up with no friends, and her behavior deteriorated. Did her friends move away or ditch her because she was mean? I don't know because we were never close. My parents boasted about her achievements but never mentioned any issues, whereas they constantly highlighted my flaws as teasing material. I only knew she had no friends because we went to the same school, and I noticed she was no longer with people. Meanwhile, I was fairly popular. My sister realized this and suddenly turned me from an occasional punching bag to someone she needed to take down constantly. She started accusing me and my friends of more things. My parents stopped letting me hang out with anyone, with excuses like, they're not good people according to your sister, or, why are you trying to leave us? Why can't you be like your sister and enjoy family time? What saved me from complete isolation was my extended family. Most of them lived in the same hometown, and I got along well with my cousins despite some age differences. At one gathering, they invited me to something. I don't remember what, and I sadly replied that I wasn't allowed to go anywhere. When asked why, my kid self bluntly said it was because I wasn't allowed to have friends since my sister didn't have any. This got back to the adults, who apparently tore my parents apart later. I was scolded for lying and grounded for a month, but after that, they gave me some leeway, so it was worth it. My sister changed schools. I guess the humiliation of our extended family knowing her social status was too much, so she demanded to switch, and my parents immediately obliged. Even though it cost them more since the school was further away, she made friends at the new school. However, she never went back to mostly ignoring me. Having felt the power to mess with me and being angry that I told the family she had no friends, she never let me go. My life remained difficult. Her friends would come over and bully me, which my parents called light teasing. I never invited friends over because my parents were awful hosts or my sister would accuse them of stealing, and my parents would believe her. I did become close to my cousins though, as my parents never dared to treat family that way. Then I got my first boyfriend. I didn't want to bring him home, but my parents insisted. At one point we were separated and he came to find me to tell me my sister was flirting with him. She came over in skimpy clothing, batting her eyelashes, and started telling him how bad I was and how good she was. He was irked and ran off to find me. Of course, my sister told my parents a different story, that my boyfriend had tried to flirt with her, but she naturally refused since she couldn't do that to me. Guess who my parents believed? My boyfriend wasn't perfect, but I immediately believed him for a mean reason. Remember, I was a teen suffering from unfair treatment. I was very resentful and moody and hated my sister as much as she hated me. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about looks. I hadn't mentioned them yet because they weren't relevant. My parents were overweight and liked showing love via food, giving more food, buying treats, etc. My sister was also overweight, whereas I was not. I've always been kind of skinny because punishment often included no treats or snacks. Obviously weight isn't what matters, personality is. But my sister, even then, was already rude and spoiled. Even her flirting attempts were bad because she never learned to work for anything since she could demand, and my parents would deliver. Added to that, the fact that she didn't look like some sexy model, even my self-conscious teen self didn't believe my boyfriend would try and cheat on me with her. Anyway, my parents prohibited me from dating such a horrible boy. I did try to keep going in secret, but it was hard, and the relationship ended. I did get another boyfriend, but again, my sister accused him of flirting with her when he refused her advances. Again, my parents believed her. I tried pointing out how this happened again, but they decided that I was incapable of making good choices and kept picking bad boyfriends. The relationship couldn't handle the Romeo-Juliet situation and fizzled out again. I would eventually get called a slut in high school as I was fine with making out with boys and such but refused to have relationships. Thankfully, it never got back to my sister or parents. My sister did bring one boyfriend home during all this time. He was paraded with pride, and my parents spent every second telling me how good he was and why I couldn't be like my sister and find myself someone like that.
until he stopped showing up and suddenly he was a conniving bastard that tricked my sister. Oh well, and the unequal treatment continued. At this time, she had more spending money, and her curfews were much better than mine. She was free to go anywhere at any time, while I couldn't. If I pointed it out, my parents would say it's because she's older, but when I reached that age, I still didn't have the same treatment she had, and when I pointed it out, they denied they ever said that or claimed it was because I couldn't be trusted like she was, using my sister's accusations against my boyfriends and friends as proof of my bad judgment. Time goes by, and it's time for my sister to graduate. She was accepted into a college, not a very well-regarded one, and she had no scholarship or anything. Again, because only her achievements were told to me, I don't know which colleges she even tried for, so I can't say how badly she was rejected. I do know her grades were bad in school though, because whenever she got a B, we would celebrate. I would usually get good grades, but my parents refused to celebrate, claiming since I always got those, what was there to celebrate? My parents naturally made a lot of fanfare and told her they'd pay for everything. I was relieved she'd be going away. Not that it made my life any easier. She'd always come home every other weekend and somehow stuff kept missing from my room, or some other issue she'd think of to make my life miserable. My curfews were still strict. Eventually, my mom came to talk to me about my impending graduation. I'm only a year younger than my sister. She told me that since they were paying for my sister's college, they had no money to pay for mine, so it would be better for me to start working immediately after graduation and wait until my sister finished university to see if they could afford something for me. Oh, and if I decided to stay at home, I'd have to pay for all my stuff, part of the bills and rent. I pointed out that I could get student loans. Mom said yes, except no, because they were so caring towards me and I had such bad judgment that they would decide if a college was worth my getting into debt or not. I'm not sure how they'd stop me from getting loans, but I didn't ask. Scholarships weren't mentioned. They had no idea what my grades were anymore and never believed in my capabilities anyway. I didn't bat an eyelid. I simply said okay. My mom clearly didn't expect that and kept prying. Maybe she hoped I'd throw a tantrum so they'd have an excuse to never pay for my college but I said nothing except that I understood their position, thanked them for caring, and that was that. My dad later tried the same, but I also refused to be emotional. You see, after a whole lifetime of their terrible parenting, I never had any expectations towards my education. I knew they would find an excuse to not pay for mine and make my life miserable. I never believed they would eventually pay if I worked and waited for my sister to graduate. I had been preparing for college for a long time. I could barely go out, my friendships were slim, so I had a lot of time to study. And study I did because I saw college as my only chance to be free. Well, the time came, and I worked my ass off and got a scholarship, not to anywhere like Ivy League or anything like law or medical school, but it was a good enough course in a decent college with a full scholarship. Knowing my sister would hate it and try to stop me via my parents, I put my achievement on social media at the same time I told them, even forcing myself to thank them in the post. Now they couldn't forbid me from going as they'd have to explain to the family why not. Initially, they were even a little proud and boasted about it, and then I guess my sister got to them and they changed gears and even asked me if I was sure I wanted to go. They let slip that my sister wasn't doing well in college, and since she was smarter and had better judgment than me, I'd suffer worse. I obviously stuck to my guns. They weren't happy but couldn't do anything. College was my savior. I started being happy. I still contacted my parents and visited on holidays and such, but since they refused to pay for anything, I could excuse not going a lot due to money. During this time, I avoided introducing any man to them, and my sister stopped going to college. I know she didn't graduate because, again, they'd have made a fanfare about it. She moved back home, paying no bills or rent, but it's different, my parents said, and started working at the same company as my mom, obviously thanks to my mom pulling strings. This was all presented to me as a point of pride. Almost there, I promise. I met my husband around this time. You know those people who say, if I were in that situation, I'd have done something. My husband is the type who actually does. I'm the type who is meek and a doormat in any situation and then can't sleep at night wishing I had done something, had thought of something witty to say, etc. I'm the person who can't help but cry when I'm angry. My husband is the guy who claps back immediately. He loves drama and loves to resolve it. He's the guy that if he doesn't immediately reply to a slight, you better start worrying because he won't forgive and forget, he's just doing something worse for revenge. He's the one who wanted me to post here and wanted to post on a nuclear revenge board too but decided what we did wasn't nuclear. People were baffled that I got together with him, 
But just because I was incapable of acting like him due to my upbringing, it didn't mean I didn't like it. I love that my husband does what I can't, and he treats people well as long as they do the same to him. When we discussed marriage, we decided we didn't care much about the ceremony due to our budget as we'd rather spend on a dream trip to Europe for our honeymoon. As for where to do it, since his family was spread out and mine was still mostly concentrated in my hometown, we decided to do it there. We weren't living too far off either, so we could take some long trips during the weekends to manage stuff. Plus, there was some work flexibility, so we could stay in my hometown for a bit too if needed. We sent out the engagement announcement and the save the date for a few months later. At this point, my parents naturally demanded to meet my man. I wanted to grow a spine and refuse, but was having a hard time. The distance had made me think maybe my parents weren't so bad. Well, my husband looked like I had cancelled Christmas when I told him I would at least ensure they were never alone with him. See, he had been getting ready for this. He even bought a high-quality recorder he could hide in a pocket to record it all. He was stoked thinking of all the ways he could refuse my sister's advances, insult her, and then spread the recording of her attempts to my family. So off he went alone and excited to meet them, and came back later euphoric. Babe, babe, you won't believe the awful things they wanted, babe, we can screw them over so bad. There's so many possibilities. I was confused and wanted to hear the recording, but he smartly told me it was better to listen to him first or else I'd misunderstand him. Well, he went there, and instead of flirting, my parents and my sister sat him down. After some grumbling about not being okay with him, my judgment, etc., they proclaimed they were willing to pay for my wedding on one condition. My sister would walk down the aisle. My parents insisted that my sister would walk down the aisle at my wedding first, in a wedding dress. Their excuse was that it wasn't okay for a younger sister to marry first, so it was only fair if my sister at least had the experience of it, at my venue, with pictures being taken, in the dress, and she'd even have a cake later. My husband will now type his part. Hey, vengeful husband here. Hell hath no fury like a pro-revenge instant karma nuclear revenge lurker when his beloved is scorned. That said, as much as my wife, she's my wife now, paints me as this quick-witted dude, I admit my neurons all but short-circuited when those folks legit suggested that crap like some sort of great gift. Even Troy would rather take in the horse a second time, me thinks. Alas, after my brain rebooted, I did have a whole list of insults ready to spew out, but something in my soul whispered in my ear like the devil, string these idiots along. So I said I needed to think, see how my wife, back then fiancé, would react, and then ran out of there before I could give away my nefarious plans. Back to me, the wife. So my husband sincerely recounted how my parents wanted even my wedding to be about my sister, with a grin on his face and the recording to prove it. I was shocked. The distance had softened how badly they treated me and I thought even they wouldn't go so far. Thankfully, my husband insisting on the angle of revenge helped me not go to a bad headspace. We had a blast thinking up ways to screw them over, from ridiculously outlandish to what we thought was feasible. We then called his much more level-headed brother when we decided on a plan. It involved having two venue addresses, giving them the wrong one, etc. Well, the level-headed brother scolded us for it. While he acknowledged he would never be able to convince us to avoid retaliation, he at least showed us that something like that would be hard to pull off. Some of our other ideas were also at risk of getting us sued, so we eventually settled for the most benign plan act like we agreed, but then hire security and don't let her in. Obviously, if that was all, it wouldn't be pro-revenge. The rest is mostly my husband's doing, but he wants me to do the honors. So here goes. Just important to mention, everything he did was previously discussed with me, and they were our mutual ideas. He went back to my parents, said he probed and thought I wouldn't be down with it. However, he didn't see the issue and, not wanting the family to fall apart, would be down to help them do it. He pointed out that I don't like conflict, so if I was surprised with it I might not throw a tantrum in front of all the people. On the other hand, marriage is a big thing, so who knew if I'd lash out. Thus, he suggested a compromise. They'd help pay for stuff. This way, I would feel even more pressure to not say anything, as not only would we be public with our families there, but I'd be grateful for the help they gave. He said my parents looked shocked, and my grown sister literally started skipping with joy like a kid, so it was accepted. Importantly, my husband also claimed that due to some bad judgment and past boyfriends, these words were all my idea and I'm so, so proud of using their words against them, I was distrustful and controlling and liked to check his phone and stuff to ensure he wasn't cheating on me. As such, it was imperative that nothing of this plan was ever put in writing. For any discussion pertaining to my sister walking down the aisle before me, he'd go over to their house to talk. 
And so began the months of deception where my parents and sister thought they were tricking me, while my husband and I were milking them. Rather than paying for the wedding, they lay low. Of course, my parents wanted input in everything, including some things that meant a lot to me, like the songs and color palette. My husband would convince them to let it go to keep me in line, but since we never really cared for the ceremony to begin with, everything else was fair game, or so they thought. Here's what we did. We'd go to check the drink and menu options and then accept the lowest or second lowest priced option. My husband would then secretly take my sister there to try it out and then sigh and say, it's a pity we don't want to abuse my parents' goodwill, so we won't get the best options. Cue my sister demanding my parents pay for the best. My parents would then tell me not to worry and they'd pay for the most expensive option. The same was done with the photographer and flowers. My husband handed my sister a bouquet of the flowers we wanted and then sadly expressed how I wanted some other tasteless flowers. Cue my parents telling me they wanted us to go with said flowers and they'd pay for it. When it came to the wedding dress, we hit a minor snag. My parents wanted me to use a hideous dress. Okay, it wasn't outright hideous, but it wasn't my style and wouldn't look good on me. We had planned on saying yes and then simply not using it, but my mom sent me a message about it, so there'd be proof I said okay. We had to go with me refusing to text and standing my ground. My husband went over there and said he'd see what he could do. My sister suggested ruining my desired dress so I'd be forced to wear the other one. He pretended to agree. During all this time, they kept communications outside any text. We made sure that happened by having me reply to my sister when she tried messaging my husband. This solidified the uncontrolling and neurotic claims my husband was making, so they believed it and never risked anything in writing. Some people might not like the thought of their partner going around and talking badly about them to family, but I'm such a doormat that the thought of being painted as this controlling and dangerous person is extremely funny to me, and I egged him on to do it. I guess I have a warped sense of humor. Oh, and my sister did try to flirt with him, but he acted conflicted to really sell that he was with them. My husband would pretend to tell them things without my knowledge, but he never told them we hired security. It was really funny. My husband and I, who had sincerely considered a courthouse wedding to focus costs on our honeymoon, ended up having this extravagant, expensive wedding and barely spent a dime. We called it back to pay for emotional damages from my parents. I think my husband, okay, he just confirmed I'm right, was enjoying the whole trick more than planning our wedding. I didn't think it was possible to witness a guy beaming at the thought of wasting his whole Saturday doing a car trip to discuss wedding details with his in-laws, but here we are. Soon the day came. The plan my parents, sister and husband had come up with was to wait until everyone was seated since the bride always comes out late. They'd have my sister arrive at that precise time to avoid me seeing her and trying to stop it, and she'd walk down the aisle. By the time I heard what happened, it would be too late to do anything. As for my dress, we saved some of the leftover fabric from my dress alterations. My husband took that to my parents' place, my sister still lives with them, and showed them as proof he'd ruined the dress, then said he had to go back to me as I was raging and he needed to calm me down. He told them he'd see them at the wedding. We made sure to keep our real security hidden initially. As the guests and my parents arrived, they only saw a woman with a list of names to check. Only after my parents had settled in did we bring out the actual security, a guy who looked like a bodyguard. We instructed him not to let my sister in and promised a generous tip if he kept our instructions confidential. Soon, the moment arrived. My parents got a text that my sister was less than five minutes away, so my dad signaled for the ceremony to start. My bridesmaids had been prepped to follow his lead, so they did without checking with me. After they all took their places, my dad stood at the entrance, waiting for me. During this, a friend not in the wedding party texted me to get ready, to avoid suspicion if my husband or bridesmaids started texting. This friend, my husband's ally, was as eager to stir drama as he was and didn't mind not being a bridesmaid. As soon as my dad took his position, the bridal song began. The doors opened and I entered. My dad was shocked to see me. He tried to look behind me but couldn't see the venue entrance from where we were, so he had no idea what had happened to my sister. Then his phone rang. I saw the caller ID, and it was her. He left me with a mumbled, something came up. Gasps and confusion filled the room. The friend on the plan loudly asked what happened. I lied and said tearfully, he told me it wasn't supposed to be me there. My husband and I had agreed that if my dad abandoned me, I should say that to make him look as bad as possible. The tears weren't just acting. I was genuinely hurt and trying not to cry. The friend then loudly asked, what did he mean by it shouldn't be you? So that everyone could hear and spread it. Then she said, I will go and check, and ran off. 
We planned this so she could create chaos with the security and prevent my dad from returning to stop the ceremony. Eventually, my mom also left. At this point, my husband's dad quickly ran over and took my arm. He'd been forewarned he might need to. His desperate run to me made me smile. I walked down the aisle to whispers as people discussed what had happened. Some left to check as well. When I reached my husband, all was well. He comforted me, joking that my sad face was so real I deserved an Oscar and reassured me he'd deal with my parents for what they did. We got married without any further issues. My parents didn't come back. I noticed a lot of people leaving and returning during the party, but no one dared tell me what was happening. Someone whispered in my husband's ear and he went out. He returned later with a thunderous expression but whispered to me that he needed to go hide before he broke character and started smiling. It worked. Here's the summary from friends, family, the security guy and my husband that I got afterwards. My sister arrived in a wedding dress. The security refused to let her in as we had agreed. He told her she must be at the wrong venue because there was already a bride. Yes, we tipped him very well as promised. My dad tried threatening him with the police, claiming he'd never heard of him, so he couldn't be working there. The security agreed to call the police since he was hired by us and was just doing his job. My dad realized it would be too late and tried to demand that he let my sister in. At this point, the friend came over, started shouting and insulting my sister, and asking what was going on, basically stalling. My mom soon arrived, followed by others. By then, the wedding plan was ruined. All my parents could do now was damage control, as everyone who learned about it was horrified they'd try to pull it off. People started screaming and berating them. The three naturally said it wasn't a secret and blamed my husband. When he was called over, my husband put on his best confused look and denied everything. To quote him, gaslight, gatekeeper, girl boss, lol. He denied ever agreeing to such a ridiculous plan. When they insisted he had, he demanded proof, and of course, they couldn't provide any. All the text exchanges they could show were about normal wedding decisions. My sister was scream crying and apparently sat on the floor kicking her legs like a child. My dad looked like he wanted to hit my husband but security and other people held him back. Naturally, they claimed they had no proof because my husband told them not to text. My husband laughed and said, wow, how convenient huh? Then he repeated, why would I ever agree to something so messed up? He ripped into them about being terrible parents and said he wasn't going to let their stupid plans and lies ruin his wedding, then went back to me. No one believed them. The venue had cameras, but they wouldn't show me the recording as it was only for security purposes. However, some people filmed parts of it. Watching my parents and sister get torn apart by everyone who came out to see the drama was delightful. After years of being accused of things and not being believed, seeing them get a taste of their own medicine was one of the best wedding gifts. My mother was crying, my dad kept changing from purple to white, and my sister was still on the floor crying and screaming. They kept insisting that my husband was in on it, but people kept asking why he would agree, why there was no proof, and why they wanted my sister to do this at my wedding. They had no good answers. Eventually, they were told to leave and had no choice but to do so. My dad apparently had to drag my sister up as she refused to leave the ground. Again, people said nothing to me all night. I guess they wanted to spare me and maybe it's because I was the bride and not just a guest for once, but it did feel like everyone was making an extra effort to be nice, positive and excited about everything. My husband says all the expensive food and drinks they were eating certainly helped, lol. We had a blast. My husband kept up the forced angry face for only a short while before breaking out in smiles again. After that, we went to the hotel to catch some sleep before heading off on our honeymoon. Speaking of which, my parents did try to pay for our plane tickets, but we thought that was risky as they could try to cancel them or something, so we refused. Since then the three of them have tried to contact me. I've refused calls because my husband insisted on keeping a paper trail, a smart move because my sister eventually messaged me. I won't repeat what she said as it was very unhinged and didn't make much sense, but the important part was that she blamed me for her humiliation. Called my husband a two-faced snake who fooled them for months, he wants to print and hang that on our wall, lol, and hoped, but was also certain, that I'd get cheated on by him. She even suggested he was cheating on me with her. My husband took my phone, screenshot the call logs, my sister's messages and some messages from my parents demanding I pick up the phone, and sent it all to our family group chat. He also sent screenshots of messages to him where they called him names and threatened him, but he kept up the you're delusional, I never agreed to anything shtick and even threatened to sue them for defamation and harassment. He wrote a message in the group chat begging my family for help as I was now being harassed by them constantly.
He pleaded with them to stop my parents and sister from ruining our honeymoon after they failed to ruin our wedding. He ended with a request that they not share our locations to prevent my parents from sending my sister over and claiming he had somehow agreed to pretend to sleep with her in our honeymoon suite, lol. My family assured him they'd handle it, and since then, we've had peace. My husband is a bit disappointed that my sister didn't disobey so he could call her out again while tearing her a new one. We'll see if the peace lasts. All in all, while I would have preferred a normal, loving family at my wedding, at least for once in my life they not only failed to ruin something meaningful to me, but I got back at them. Extra info, do I know why they treat me like this? I've been asked this question a lot, so I assume you all will wonder the same. I've pondered this all my life and still don't know. I tried asking when I was young, but they denied any difference and scolded me for being spoiled, so I stopped trying. I've considered many possibilities, but based on my observations I think it's this. I was unplanned. They took a while to have my sister, so she was not only wanted but also like a miracle child after so long. However, given our small age difference, I think they didn't expect to have another child so soon or easily and didn't use adequate protection after my sister's birth. Maybe they didn't realize my mom was pregnant until it was too late, so they were saddled with an unplanned baby while still dealing with a newborn. They're not well off, so having the extra expense likely didn't help, and they resented me. But that's just my conjecture. Regardless, I've accepted that the reason won't truly matter. What they did to me was unwarranted, no matter what. Did they really think this would work? My husband and I have a theory that they never intended to do this at all. We think my sister threw a tantrum over me getting married first when she barely gets dates, and they made my husband that outlandish proposition. They didn't want to pay for my wedding and didn't think we'd accept or that it would even look good for them to do it. By suggesting it and being refused, they could look like the good guys to my sister while having an excuse not to give me a dime. But then my husband accepted it and they couldn't backtrack without risking my sister turning on them. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real life stories happening around you.